Can I buy the truth off you, God? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you slide up a little bit to that microphone? Um, please state your name for the record. Jeremy Shane Kidd. Mr. Kidd, how old are you? 41. How many children do you have? Six. What are their age ranges? From young, just the 19, youngest and the 19 oldest. to 4. Are you currently employed? Yes. What kind of work do you do? Surveying. Do you know Christopher McNabb? Yes. How do you know him? I was good friends with his uncle and, and his dad. So, who was his father? Mike McNabb. And you said you were good friends with them. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I ain't seen him. Any. I hadn't seen him recently I'm up until I seen Chris again for, I don't know, about 15 years. Okay. So is that somebody that you used to hang out with or associate yep. with? Yep. And um, did you see Chris when he was a child? Yes. And how long have you known Chris for? Since he was about seven. Okay. Um, and what about Courtney Bell? Do you know her? Yes. How do you know her? Um, her mom through Pam. Okay. Do you know her father as well? Yes. Is it fair to say then that you know both of their families on each side? Right. Okay. Now, um, in the fall of 2017, were you hanging around with Christopher McNabb? Yes. What was the nature of y'all's relationship? What were, we just besides being friends, what did y'all do together? Got high. I'm sorry? Got high. Got high? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what did you get high on? Meth. All right. Now, um, I'm going to draw your attention back to September the 13th of 2017. Do you recall an occasion where um, you saw Matthew Lester? Yes. Now, was there some sort of a um, beef between Timmy Rushton and Matthew Lester? Yes. Can you tell the members of the jury what that was about? Matt was with um, was with Timmy's mama, and anyways, Timmy told him that you know don't put his hands on his mama, and Matt did, and they got you know, Timmy did what he needed to do, I guess. Okay. So what did Timmy need to do? Bite him. Okay. Um, were you involved in getting Matthew Lester um, set up in a position where he could be beat up? I guess. Tell the members of the jury what happened that day. Timmy called me and asked me if I'd seen Matt, and I told him yeah, and um. He told me what had happened between Matt and his mom and wanted me to bring him to him. And I told him, that, you know, it ain't my car. I can't do it. You know, anyways, I told him to call Chris and Chris, him and Chris talked and set it up to, to go back to Chris and Courtney's trailer. And that's where it happened at. Okay. Now, were you at the trailer on that day? Yes. So how did Matt get to the trailer? Me, Chris and Courtney picked him up on 142 and it, he went back with us. Okay. Um, now, what about... The little girl, are you familiar with um, Clarissa mm -hmm. and also Kalia? Yes. Okay. Um, with respect to Clarissa, was she there that day at the trailer? Yes. She was in, her and Courtney sat in the car. Okay. And was Timmy Rushton already there at the trailer when y'all got back with Matt Lester? No. So what happened? We went inside, me, Chris, and uh, Matt went inside. I sat down, I was playing Chris's Xbox, and Matt was sitting in a chair on the other side of the living room, and probably 10, 15 minutes later, Chris walked outside, and when he, well, he didn't come back in first. Timmy came through the door first, and they started fighting, and then Chris jumped in, and he had a, a pair of brass knuckles and started hitting Matt. Anyway, they fought all the way down the hallway. When they got to the end of the hallway, um, Chris opened up the back door and kicked Matt out the back door. Okay. Now, were you beating up on Matt Lester? No. What were you doing? I kept playing an Xbox. I'm sorry, you kept I playing kept, Xbox? Yeah. It wasn't none of my business. Okay. Um, do you recall what you're playing? Call of Duty. Now, do you remember whether there was blood there in the trailer? Not really, no. Do you remember how, I mean, was Matt Lester injured just slightly or severely? Yeah, he was, when I seen it, he, when he posted pictures on Facebook, he looked pretty bad. Okay. Um, but I mean, that day, did you actually see him before he got kicked out of the trailer? Not really. Are you familiar um, with the way the trailer is set up there? I mean, you talked about that hallway. Where were y'all at in the trailer when um, Timmy and, and Chris rushed in? In the living room. Okay. And what hallway are you referring to? 
the only hallway in a trailer. Where does it go to? To the to their bedroom. I'm going to show you uh, state's exhibit number 22. Can you, do you have a screen in front of you? Um, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Is that um, the doorway? Which doorway did Chris and Timmy come in? That that porch doorway or the one on the back side? That one. Okay. And when you talk about him being kicked out of the trailer, was that on the same side or is that on the no, opposite side? it was side? on the opposite side. So I'm going to show you state's exhibit number 24. Is that... Um, the opposite side of the trailer? Yes. Okay. And where exactly was uh, Timmy seated in the residence? I mean, I'm sorry, Matt seated in the residence when he got jumped? In a chair, like right across from the front door. Okay, I'm going to show you state exhibit number 33. Do you recognize that as the inside of the trailer? Yes. What chair was he in? That one right there. Okay. Can you um, <coughs> can you mark that on your screen if you touch it? It ain't on the screen. I'm sorry. It's not on the screen. The chair's not on the screen. No, the picture ain't on the screen. You don't see it on your screen. No. Nope. Okay. Is this is it open? No. Can somebody come up here and check his screen? shouldn't be any markings. Can you draw uh, Mr. Kidd on there where you were and where Matt Lester was? I was right there and Matt was right there. Okay. And you referred to the hallway. I'm going to show you state's exhibit number 34. Can you tell us what's depicted there? Hallway. And how far down this hallway did Mr. Lester go? To that door right there. What happened after, um, who kicked him out of the door? Chris. What happened after Chris kicked him out of the door? Matt went up, he went running up the hill and we both looked out the window and uh, Matt was talking to somebody and Chris said, come on, the police probably coming. So Chris started grabbing all the paraphernalia out of his house and put it in a camouflage shirt or a jacket on. Anyways, when we started going out the door, the book bag that Matt had, I grabbed it and um, Chris said, come on, we was going through it. We was going to go through the woods and go to Henderson Mill Road, and Courtney was going to pick us up on Henderson Mill. What um, was the book bag? Do you remember what was in there? Not, I never even looked in it. Why were y'all getting the book bag out of, or why was Chris wanting to get the book bag out of the trailer? We didn't know what was in it. I'm sorry? We didn't know what was in it. Okay. Um, now, do you, do you ever, did you ever find out what was in it when you got out there? Nope. Did you ever take anything out of the bag? Nope. You said Chris was the one who took you down the trail, or did you take Chris down the trail? Chris took me down it. Have you ever gone down that trail before? No. Have you, have you lived there in Eagle Point Mobile Home Park? No. Were you aware of the existence of that trail, if you will, or power line no. easement that led to Henderson Mill? No. So if Chris were to say that it was your idea, or you're the one who showed him that path to go down that trail, would that be the truth? Nope. When y'all got down to Henderson Mill, what did y'all do? Started walking. And then what happened? I think maybe he called Courtney and told her that we were on Henderson Mill to pick us up. Did Courtney come and pick you up? Yes. Was there somebody in the car with Courtney? Just Carissa. Okay. Now I'm going to draw your attention um, a little bit forward in that from September um, the 13th to September the 23rd. Um, did you have the occasion to be in the hospital just prior to that on the 22nd? Yes. And why were you in the hospital? I had a broken jaw. Where were you in the hospital at? Atlanta Medical. And without getting into too much detail, can you tell the members of the jur jury generally how you, your uh, jaw got broke? Somebody hit me with a piece of asphalt. Okay. 
So on September the 23rd, um, or somewhere about that time, did you learn from Mr. McNabb that there was a um, birth in the family? Yes. And um, did you, at some point in time, go to the hospital to see the baby? Yes, he came and picked me up. Okay. And who came and picked you up? Chris did. What did y'all do? First, we, after he picked me up, we went back to their house. And he, you know, it was a mess, and he was talking about cleaning it up. Anyways, Courtney started calling, wanting him to come back to the hospital, so we left their house and went back to the hospital. Okay. When you said it was a mess at their house, what do you mean by that? It was nasty. The trailer was nasty? Yep. Describe what you mean by that. Just stuff everywhere. Trash, clothes. It was just a mess. Was that of any concern to you? Not really. Did you make any efforts to get it cleaned up? Yeah, I and did. Why'd you do that? Because they had a newborn baby, that's why. Well, explain that. Well, he was wanting to clean it up, but Courtney was calling wanting him to come back to the hospital, so we left and went back to the hospital. Did you get somebody else to clean yes. it up? Yeah. Who was that? Uh, Jessica Schumann and Carrie Carter. And who were those to you? Just some friends. Do you know whether or not they actually cleaned it up? Yes, I was there. Jessica came and picked me up from the hospital. We went and picked up Carrie and went to their house and cleaned it up. I called Chris and told him what we were doing, and he, he said, go ahead, and thank you. You've admitted that you've smoked methamphetamine. Right. Nonetheless, do you believe that children should be protected? Yes. Were you concerned about the newborn being brought into this trailer? Right. So when you went to the hospital, did you go into the hospital, or did you just... Did I went into the, the hospital. I went into the, the lobby, okay. the waiting room right outside the birth center. Did you see the baby? No. What did you do? Just sat in the, lot, in the little waiting area. Okay. And was that the day that the baby was brought home, or just the day? No, I think it was the day she was born. Okay. Did you later go to the hospital on the day that she was born? Yeah, I went to the hospital the day I mean, I'm sorry, was... on the day that she came home? Yes. And how did you go there? Chris and Courtney. So were you in the car with them on that day? Yes. When y'all got to the hospital, what did you do? Sit in the car. Why'd you sit in the car? Because my jaw was broke and I was trying to eat something. So I just sat in the car. And what were you up. eating? A burrito. And was your jaw wired shut at that yes, time? Yes, it was. Did you have any tubes? I had a tube coming out, a drain tube coming out from behind my ear. Why did you go to the hospital given your condition on that day? Because they asked me to. They asked me to ride with them. Did you consider uh, Chris a friend at that time? Yes, I did. Did you notice that whether or not any other of his friends had come to the hospital to see his baby? No. Shortly thereafter, did they ever arrive with the child to come back to the car? Yes. And what did they do with the child? Put her in the car. Put her in the car seat and we left. They took, me, they took me somewhere else and dropped me off. And I don't know where they went after that. I guess they went home. Okay. Now, for the next, um, I guess, several days, between the time that you were with them on September 27th when the baby was brought home from the hospital to the time that Chris was charged with a probation violation on October the 8th, did you have contact with Chris McNabb? Yes. And were you hanging out at different places in Newton County with Mr. McNabb during that period of time? Yes. What were y'all doing during that period of time? Just hanging out, getting high. Have you had the occasion to um, review some of your, some of the Facebook records in connection with this case? Not really. Do you know whether or not um, Mr. McNabb texted you or communicated with you in some form or fashion on the morning of October the uh, 7th, 2017? Yes. What time did he reach out to you? He texted me all night long that Friday night. Why was he texting? What, he was wanting to know where I was. Did he you was trying to eat? Nope. Why not? Because that Friday afternoon when um, he called me and told me that her dad had just brought the kids back home and Courtney was in the background telling him he wasn't going anywhere, that he was going to stay at home. and. That, I just never answered the phone for him again because I didn't want to be the reason that he took off and called the, you know, called the fight between both of them. Now, were you aware um, of an incident that occurred prior to that where um, were you ever in the presence when Mr. McNabb made an assault upon Ms. Bell? Yes. Tell us about that. 
I was at Missy Davis's apartment at the, you know, above the trailer park. Anyways, Chris come up there and said that him and Courtney had just got into a fight. And um, he, he stayed up there for a minute and he said he was going back home. I told him I'd walk with him. Anyway, when we got back down there, he walked in and they started arguing again and he jumped on her and he started hitting her. What did you say or do about that? I told him, you know, enough was enough, come on. Leave, you know, leave her alone. Now, was there another occasion when you and Mr. Um, McNabb were trying to leave in a car? Yes. Tell the jury about that. We were trying to leave. I was in Timmy's mom's car, Cindy's car. Anyways, I stopped by over there and Chris was wanting to go with me. And Courtney didn't want him to leave and she kept leaning against the car, standing in the way. And he finally flipped out and jumped out of the car and knocked her down. And then jumped in the car and he wanted me to take off. But you know, I didn't really take, I left, but I didn't really take off the way he wanted me to. It was like he was telling me to, you know, smash out. But, you know, I, hell, I felt bad for her. Um, do you know whether that she was pregnant or she'd had the child already? I will say she was still pregnant. Now, she might not have been. Are you familiar with um, this busted out window that I'm showing you in State Exhibit number 48? Yeah. Do you know how that window got busted out? They told me, Chris, through a Objection, Your Honor. Uh, well, who told you that? First Chris and Courtney told me that Chris threw a TV through it. Submission by the party opponent, Judge. Objection overruled. That Chris threw what through that? A TV. Had Chris, you were, were you hanging out with him pretty regularly during these days leading up to baby um, Kalia being killed? Yes. Did he ever tell you um, that Matt Lester had broken into his tra trailer? No. Was the whole beef that day where Matt Lester was beat up, was that centered just around Timmy Rushton's yes. mama getting? Yes. That's Cindy, right? Yes. Do you know um, whether or not Chris McNabb was a big dope dealer? No. Yep. You were smoking dope with him. Yeah. How was he acquiring dope at that time? He didn't really even have any. It was me that had it. So how did he get it to smoke it then? I'd give it to him or smoke it with him. Okay. Um, what did he have? Large sums of cash that he carried around? No. Did he have flashy gold jewelry or anything that would make him the subject of somebody who wanted to execute a hit on him or break into the trailer to rob him of anything? No. Did Mr. McNabb have um, enemies that you were aware of that were capable or? or on the radar of somebody who might break into the trailer to steal his baby and kill it? No. The day of October the 7th, after you learned that the child had been, um, quote unquote, kidnapped, were you and Mr. McNabb texting on that day um, or communicating via Facebook Messenger about what he needed to do? What do you mean? Did you give him advice about what he needed to do about his child being missing? You recall yeah, that? I told him he needed to pray about it. I'm going to tender into the evidence, Judge States Exhibit Number 72, which is two volumes of Facebook records for the Facebook account Jordan, J O R D Y N N, head crack, fell with a C. H-E-A-D-C-R-A-K, Izzo, I-Z-Z-O. Mr. Frost. No objection. Submitted without objection. There's a business record certification that accompanies a judge. I'm going to put up on the screen page 77 of these records. And again, um, starting here at the bottom of these records. Can you see a message there that you would have um, sent to Chris McNabb? Are you aware that Jordan Headcrack Izzo was his uh, Facebook address at some point in time? Yes. All right, that message here that says Shane Kidd, 
without a message that you sent on October the 8th, that says 6.07 UTC time, so four hours behind, that would be 2.07 in the morning. Yep. Can you tell the members of the jury what you said to him? So Chris, I ain't heard anything. Only thing I know to do is pray that she is okay. Y'all need to do the same. Get on your knees and beg the good Lord to bring her home safe. I love y'all and I'm praying for her and y'all. And did um, Mr. McNabb communicate with you on October the 8th at 2.34 p.m. asking you for something? Yes. What was he asking for? He said, Uncle, I got to have a bag of groceries. You dig, see if you can take me shopping. Okay, now what does the term unk mean to you? Uncle. Is that what he referred to you as? Yes. And when he talks about a bag of groceries, is he talking about going Krogerine or is he talking about something else? He's talking about something else. What is he talking about? A bag of meth. And you responded saying what? I don't have any groceries right now. I'm going to the grocery store, what you need, and I'll get it. And then, again, that would have been at roughly 2.30 in the afternoon, um, the day after his child went missing. And then what does he tell you? I won't sleep until my little baby is back home. And you said in response? I figured yeah, I would do the same. I said, you, what did you tell him next? You want to tell me what you need so I can get it? And then on the following day, on October the 8th, again, this would say 20 military time, UTC time. Um, so assuming that UTC time means four hours behind, um, you would have texted him that afternoon. What did you tell him? I said, boy, wherever you are, do the right thing. Get on your knees and pray for forgiveness. And, and the right thing, I don't know what happened, but that baby girl deserved more than, a, more than that, not a duffel bag in the woods. So when you said that message, had you learned that the child had been found in the woods in a duffel bag? Yes. Were you giving him not advice? Yeah. Are you aware that your name was brought up in this investigation um, via Courtney to Chris about you possibly being the person who went into the trailer and killed the child? No. Do you recall um, being um, in the presence of Courtney um, after Chris was arrested? Uh, with some young girl who, I guess, started some gossip about this case? Yes. Tell the members of the jury about that. Where were you and what happened? We were at somebody's house in Conyers, and um, anyway, the girl called Courtney outside and told her that, that I had told her that I killed their baby. Courtney come back inside and told me, and I said, you know, I went outside and confronted the girl, and she said that she didn't say it, that she said something else. So are you aware... Um, that Mr. McNabb brought your name up in this investigation no. as a person. Would you have ever broken into that trailer to kill baby Kalia? No. Those are all the questions that I have for this witness. Mr. Carter. Uh, thank you, Judge. Good morning, Mr. Kent. How are you? All right. Just have a couple of questions for you. Um, you, uh, you said you were in communication with uh, Mr. McNabb uh, the night of night of October sixth, morning of October seventh, to some extent. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and. Your usual manner of communication with him is through Facebook. Right. Uh, in fact, that's the really the only way you got in touch with him unless one of y'all had a phone and you knew what the other's number was, right? He had a phone. Uh -huh. he, you know, he'd call me, Facebook call me or whatever. Uh, but you generally did not communicate uh, except usually by yep. face, Facebook. All right. <clears throat> You are the Jeremy Shane kid that pled guilty to giving false name to a law enforcement officer uh, in the Superior Court of Morgan County on May 13th of 2009, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, Your Honor, at this time I would tender Defense Exhibit N10. Objection. Certified copy. Submitted without objection. You're the Jeremy Shane kid that pled guilty to giving false information to a law enforcement officer in Newton County on September 22nd of 2011. Is that right? Yeah. Your Honor, tender Defense Exhibit M11. Objection. Submitted without objection. And you are the same Jeremy Shane kid that pled guilty to uh, giving false information to a police officer in Jasper County, Georgia on December 12th, um, December 12th of 2017. Is that correct? Yes. All right. You're on a tender certified copy. Uh, defendants in 12. No objection. objection. Submitted without objection. And you are actually on probation now. Is that right? Yes. Up until two weeks ago, you had a probation warrant out for you. Is that correct? I don't know. You don't know? No. <clears throat> uh, are you aware that the DA arranged to have that probation warrant lifted so that you could come into Newton County and talk to them? No. Objection, Judge. There's no evidence of that. Objection sustained. All right. The, when you spoke with Chris McNabb, you spoke with him on his Facebook account called Jordan Headcrack Izzo. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much the only Facebook account that you spoke with him on? No. All right. Which other ones did you speak with him on? Just about every one he's had. Uh, on October 8th, 2017, when you're talking with him, telling him he needs to pray and talking about getting groceries for him, you were speaking on Jordan Head Crack Izzo, is that correct? Yes. Nothing further, Mr. Frost. Yes, sir. Thank you. Just a couple questions, Mr. Kidd. What What exactly did you mean when you were telling him you better get on your knees and pray? What 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 is it you think he should have been praying for? For what he did, which is he killing Kalia. Yeah. Did you ever notify authorities that you suspected him? He had already been arrested for it. Okay, so this was after his arrest that you stated this. Yeah. As far as the house well, they were being looking for him or whatever, they were looking for him. I guess. But you talked to him. You talked to him the night before any of this. She even went missing, correct? He was with me the night before. Okay. Thursday night. Did you learn anything that night? Did you know no, anything? Thursday night or Friday night? The night before she went missing, or the. The morning she went missing. No, October I wasn't 7th. With him. I wasn't with him. Early. Just tell him what day you're talking about. October 7th. Counselor, tell him the day of the week. Friday. Friday? I, didn't, I talked to him Friday afternoon. But Friday okay. night, I didn't talk to him. And Saturday? I didn't talk to him until like Saturday morning, until, I don't know, somewhere around 8 30. 8 30 a.m. or p.m.? A.m. You say the house was filthy. This was while Courtney was giving birth? Yes. She had been at the hospital for two days, correct? No. I no? Know I'm I sorry? Know of. Didn't she have the baby on, on Saturday? When I went to the house, it was on Saturday. Okay. You're aware that she did give birth in a hospital? Yeah. Okay. And, and you're aware that there was complications to that birth? Yes. And that she spent time in the hospital? Yes. Okay. So the house being filthy... You arranged to have some people come in out of the goodness of your heart? Yes. But you do understand, of course, my client, prior to being in the hospital, giving birth for those two days, uh, was also fully pregnant? Yes. Okay. And you say you went to the hospital, but you just sat in the car? When they picked her up, yeah. All right, that's all I've got. Thank you. Ms. Zahn? Um, are you aware of whether or not Chris was up at the hospital in one of those days between the 23rd and the 27th when the baby came home and then left in a sudden hurry? Yes. Can you tell us about that? He called me and told me that, um, that crime suppression and 
some other police were at the hospital and he and he took off running. Well, he, tried, he asked me to get him a ride. And the only people I get to get him a ride was Missy Davis and Jamie Stevens. Why did he take off running from the hospital he, where his baby was? He said he thought he had a warrant on him. And they, they were there for him. Where did he go to? He went to um, the city park across from, well, down the street from the Covenant Police Department. So he went to Academy Springs Park? Yep. Now, you indicated that he had multiple Facebook accounts? Yes. And was he texting you from all of those different ones? Yes. Are you absolutely certain that he was texting you in the morning hours of October the 7th when the baby was missing? Yes. What was he saying to you? He was just asking me where I was. And I never, you know, I didn't answer him. And at like 7.41, Saturday morning, he sent me a message and told me that he was wigging and tripping and needed to get out of there. And I didn't say anything to him. What does wigging and tripping mean to those who don't smoke methamphetamines? Paranoid. And if you could just indulge me for a minute, for those who have not smoked methamphetamine, what is the effect? I mean, what, what happens? Do you stay up more than you yes. normally would? Yes. Is it possible to not sleep when you smoke methamphetamines? Yes. Can that go for days? Yes. Have you done that personally? Yes. So, so literally, like, how many days in a row could you go without sleeping? Four or five. With no sleep at all? No sleep at all. And what happens when you finally go to sleep? You crash out. You sleep hard. You'll sleep for a day or so. Has that happened to you? Yes. And on that particular day, how do you remember that 741 so specifically? Because of what he said. And then, I don't know, it was less than an hour later he sent me another message and told me that he couldn't find a baby. And that's when I finally responded to him and asked him, you know, what do you mean you can't find her? It ain't like she can get up and walk. You need to wake Courtney up and y'all need to find her. And that is different from these messages that we saw earlier today? Yes. But you're certain about that? I'm certain. And the jury just heard that you've been convicted on multiple occasions of giving false information to a police officer. That's a misdemeanor offense? Yes. Have you ever been convicted of a felony, Chen Kid? Yes, in 1994. What was that? I was in 1994. What was the crime, though? Um, theft by taking and entering an auto. Okay. Um, given the fact that you've lied to the police or pled guilty at least on three different occasions <laughs> to lying to the police, why should the jury believe what you're telling them today about the morning hours of the 7th and your communications with Mr. McNabb? I mean, what I lied to the police about was my name because I had a warrant on me. I don't see no reason why I'd make up, you know, make up a lie about this. Thank you. Those are all the questions that I have. Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Kidd, uh, the communication at 7.41 a.m. on October 7th, um, was that made over Facebook Messenger? Yes. Um, which account of yours was that from? The only one I got. All right. Uh, do you have those messages? No. Nope. Why not? Because I don't keep messages. If you ain't one of my kids or part of my family, I don't need them. Uh, would it surprise you to know that those messages are nowhere on Chris McNabb's Facebook Messenger? I guess. Which account? Judge, I would ask that to be clarified. This account? Well, it's certainly not on this account because we've got those records in, right? So, okay. So, um, are you aware that it's not on any account that has been um, that that we have subpoenaed? You're aware that none of those accounts contain any information about Chris McNabb texting you at 7:40, 8:40, any time that morning. No. showed you where you were speaking with Chris McNabb on October 8th after the uh, police had been called, as you said, is that right? Yep. Uh, and you were aware that there are no other messages from you during that time period except those messages she showed you. Yep. But you're trying to tell this jury that you 
have the key to this case and that you know that Chris McNabb is awake during a time when you're supposed to be asleep. Is that right? Yeah. And they're supposed to take your word for it. Is that right? So when did you go to Investigator Alexander and tell him this? I don't know, a couple of weeks after he was arrested. You told uh, Investigator No, Alexander. I told Bo Alexander. All right, you told Bo Alexander this yes, I did. a couple of weeks after she was arrested. All right, did you tell Investigator Jeff Alexander that? No. Mr. Frost. I'm sorry. I, I may have not articulated my question properly, or perhaps you misunderstood it. I'm not sure which. On a Saturday, October 7th, 2017, Saturday morning, the morning the child went missing, mm -hmm. you're saying that at 741, <laughs> you knew that child was missing. No, he sent me a message at 741 and said that he was wigging and tripping and needed to get out there for a little while. I thought you just said no, you need to. No, I said what Let I me said finish, sir. Right. I did not hear him say that. I heard him say what he's saying up here. Okay. Did you not say you need to wake up Courtney? Yeah, about an hour later, he sent me another message that said he couldn't find the baby. Okay, so that would be around 841. I guess, yeah. Still when everybody was supposed to be sleeping. Yeah. But you're clear on the fact that he... So at 841, I don't know. I'm not sure if it was 841. I said less than an hour later. Less than an hour later. So 830? I, mean, I ain't exactly sure what time it was. 830? Could have been. Okay. In any event, he says, wake up, Courtney. No, I told him to wake up, Courtney. I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. But you say, wake up, Courtney. So you presume she's sleeping. Mm -hmm. All right. He said he couldn't find a baby. I told him, I said, well, you need to get Courtney's ass up and y'all need to find a baby. That's what I said. All right. Did you at any point in between that point and the time that the child was discovered suspect foul play? No. You did not. What did you what what did you think happened? Did you did you have an opinion? I had no idea. I didn't have any idea. What happened. Now listen to me. When they object, you I, need to stop talking I, until I can listen and make some ruling. I'll, I'll rephrase that question. Okay. Here. Did, was there anything that you knew that could have possibly uh, assisted you in formulating an opinion on what may have happened? No. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Ms. Zahn. Nothing further, Judge. You may step on down.